Um, Ron, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, Ed. Starting with your book, Heroic Misadventures, um, in it you largely write about your own escapades, business escapades. However, this book also provides a fascinating uh, real-life account of 40 uh, years of history of Australia, 1960s through 1990s. How did the book come about? Well, uh, it started off just being a book about my what I call misadventures, which is what I learned from some of the some of my ventures in the business. That some went very well, some didn't go very well. But while I was writing it, especially as I was coming to the conclusion of the book, I realised that the book itself is more about Australia for those 40 years, because I was having some misadventures, some things that worked and some things didn't didn't work. But Australia itself was going through a series of cycles, and and uh, <clears throat> And it, it, it had come out of, in the early 70s, Australia had emerged from a period of extreme wealth, where wealth was abundant. But we, then we blew it all and we had about 15 difficult years. And I could see that as we were moving into the, say, 2008 era, we'd come out of, once again, an era where we were abundant wealth, everything was going, it was too good and I could see that we'd not conserved anything, we were not saving anything for a downtime and then the GFC, the global financial crisis came along and caught so many people unexpectedly, they were, they were, they were exposed, too much debt and then now we're back where we were in the early 70s, we should be again in uh, continuing through prudent investments, a, a buoyancy, but the, we've, we've fallen in a heap and now we've got a, a, a rebuilding process, to go personally and nationally. Okay, so you're basically back where you kind of, where you started. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, two wonderful cycles back in the early 70s, we were coming out of the nickel boom and, and oil exploration. Uh, it was it was very sound, soundly based, but these commodities, but they come to the end of the run, and you 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 think it's going to go forever. It never goes forever, and the same with this cycle. And we had too much. We were carrying too much debt. I guess that book. How did that book come to be? It's the. It's really the fourth of a series of of, of books, and. Uh, I started documenting my grandfather's era. He was one of the first mining engineers ever come to Western Australia and he had a, left a series of diaries and notes and I, <clears throat> he died 13 years before I was born so I never really met him but I was, I've been largely influenced by him and, um, and to get to know him better I decided to do his book. It was called So I Headed West. And that got me interested in the family history and, and, and the, the activities of that time. And that was an era when miners were heroes. They went out and they created cities, they created the inland, they created the substance of Australia and on which we're still living today. Then I followed that up with two other books. One was of, a, of an early prospector called Balzano and his early adventures. Then the third book was about, I called it Never a Dull Moment, because that covered my parents' era, and that took it right through to 1970, and that, I stopped at 1970, because I, it was very appropriate, because some major discoveries were made, mineral discoveries were made in Australia, and the whole world arrived on our doorstep to seek these minerals, and they brought a lot of exploration techniques and a lot of knowledge, so that was the time to st stop that book. So the, the heroic misadventures continued on from that one. The, the structure came to me, I was being interviewed by uh, the Australian National uh, Radio, ABC, and uh, they asked me uh, how I got interested in history and I started talking about this, the, the substance, the subject of this, and the interviewer said, Ron, you've had such an interesting career, you should make a book of it. So I thought, well, okay, <laughs> with, that, with that degree of encouragement, I'll make a book of it. Right. Um, early on in the book, we find out that you got into business at a very early age, hmm. such as, um, say, for example, uh, selling newspapers at age 10, 
then making and selling uh, rudimentary radios from Germanian tubes, yeah. and then working in your father's uh, shop, uh, mining shop. How much importance do you attribute to these early real-world work experiences in putting you on the right path to eventual success in your life? Well, I think what we do as young people to express our desire to be independent, I wanted to be independent of my parents uh, financially. I wanted to be paying my mother housekeeping from the time I was about 10. Wow. And, and, and that drove me to be a, a paper boy and then I, uh, uh, w with the money I saved from, uh, from those early adventures, I bought a jukebox and really had the first jukebox in the, in the city where I was living at the time. And uh, I, I think it was a desire to be independent. So that, that forms who you are, how long you, you wish to be just uh, living off your parents or at what stage you want to be independent and supporting yourself. So, of course, it's been a strong desire <laughs> since age 10. All right. Um, in that perspective, what advice would you give to today's young people that are just starting up with their own uh, careers and are invest investing in their own future? Should they just uh, go and get a college degree? Uh, no, that's a, it's, a, it, it's, it's a question that's often asked of me for the, we've sent about 640 young scholars to conferences and, uh, and internships around the world and they are often asking this question, what, what makes the difference? Now, it's a question I, I often ask, if, I meet a lot of very successful people and uh, that's the question I always ask of them, what happened in your life that made all the difference? And you know, this is a surprising thing, their answer is never their education, it's never which university they went to, it's not what clubs they're part of, it was always always a little surprising event that happened in their life, something that just came along out of the blue and, and they saw that opportunity for what it was, was an opportunity, they seized it and they made the most of it and that made them just a little bit different to everyone else. And I tell the, young, the students, this is very important, when they're seeking a career, they produce a CV, a document saying how good they are. All those CVs, all those documents look alike. They come out of the educational system like peas out of a pod. And when you're looking, you're seeking someone for a, for a, a very key position, you don't really want someone without that spark of individuality. individuality. You don't want somebody that's like a pea out of a pod. And it's that little event that happened in their life, two events that I won't mention happened to me when I was much younger. And, and they, they took me out of a country town. They made me realize there was a world out there. And that's, that's been worrying me ever since. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm grappling, I'm engaging myself with the world, not with a very small environment in which we're normally born and raised. So that's, that's the, be different, be courageous, and concentrate on what makes you different to all the others. On the matter of how you prepare yourself for the career that you've chosen for yourself, it reminds me of the wise uh, uh, remarks made. I had a mentor called Leonard E. Reed, and he founded the Foundation for Economic Education in the US way back in, I think, about 1947. But he used to say to me, Ron, for your career, don't push yourself. Only go where you're invited, but be prepared. So always be preparing yourself for that career that you have in mind for yourself out there in front. So when the occasion arises, you are ready and you can put your hand up and say, well, I know a little bit about that and you will be so different from everyone else who will be apologising for not knowing enough about it. You will be prepared and you will be selected and you will be invited and you'll be ready for when you're invited. Many so-called uh, wannabe entrepreneurs who uh, hesitate on making their own uh, entrepreneurial moves 
they will certainly appreciate uh, reading your book from all the experience that you, you, ha you have had. But uh, so many of them, even after reading so many how-to books on, on economics and on business, they're still stuck in their own little world that they hesitate to, to make that move and, and finally become entrepreneurs. I guess they're really afraid of, uh, afraid of failure. So what would you advise those people to do? I guess I got a background in engineering and the engineers are very good at measuring things and if I if I have a, a, a if I had made a career move or if we started or got involved in a business and it didn't go so well I, I, I later evaluated I, what went wrong and you, you measure these things and we do that the same uh, and I'll, I'll mention uh, later how we use the same sort of techniques within our foundation but I measure these things, I find out what went wrong, what did I do wrong, and that makes me very determined to start again in the next venture to correct all those mistakes, to steady and maintain the, the focus on the things that did work very well and avoid the things that didn't work as well as we had hoped. But is entrepreneurship something that perhaps people are, say, born with, entrepreneurial spirit? Is it something that we can learn over time, trial and error? Well, it takes courage. It takes courage. We have all this knowledge. We have the, most of us have the ability to be entrepreneurial. But the type of employment that's offered these days really offers so much security that many people are afraid to leave that, that security blanket and try it for themselves. They'll never be an entrepreneur if they are more influenced by security of tenure uh, superannuation and uh, you know, benefits and the, the fact that their job comes with a, with a car and a housing allowance and all this other fruit that goes with these security things. But that's not entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is saying, I don't want any of that because I have enough confidence in my own ability to succeed.